How can you use Notion in your real estate business? I'm sure you've heard of Notion by now, the app that's taken the productivity world by storm, but it can have quite a steep learning curve. There are thousands of templates online for habit trackers, second brain templates, and to-do lists, but what if you want to do something a little bit more specific like running a real estate business? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you today. I've been using Notion to run my real estate investment business for the past three years and I couldn't be without it. And I want to help you to do the same. In this video, I showed you five different ways that you can use Notion in your real estate business. And today I'm gonna to share with you five more ways that I think you must know about. Plus I'll also share with you 15 Notion features that you can use in your workspace straight away. If you've not visited my channel before, hi, I'm Andy Gort, a real estate investor and coach. I help people to work on their businesses rather than in them. I've added timestamps here for each section so that you can jump to the bit that you need and I'll also add them to the description below. Plus if you hang around until the end I'm going to share with you a link so that you can go and download some of these templates for free. First up is using Notion as a tenant directory. As a real estate investor, it's really important that you keep accurate and up-to-date records for all of your customers. And Notion makes this really easy by using it as a CRM. Here you can see the tenant directory set up and I've added some dummy data just to show you how it works. So we've got the name of each of the various tenants, uh, their status uh, within the business, so whether it's periodic, uh, whether they are a new tenant, uh, etc. Um, the bedroom that they have applied for or that they are currently living in along with the house. Uh, we can add a referencing report or attachments, uh, the amount of rent per month and then the couple of dates. So when their contract started and then when their contract fixed period ends plus any notes. So the three Notion features that I wanted to share with you are firstly database properties. Then we're also going to have a quick look at adding attachments and files. And then lastly being able to track the progress of our applicants using the database board view. So let's firstly take a look at adding a database property. So here we've got a plus icon on the right hand side and here we want to add a deposit for these tenants. So if I just firstly select the type of property, so this is going to be a number field uh, and let's go and call this deposit. And now we just want to go and change it from a number to a currency. So let's just add pound, just as easy as that. Uh, we then go and click off and we can add the various numbers in here. So let's just say for this tenant, it's going to be 200 pounds. You can see it's added in the symbol um, there. Um, and if we wanted to move this column, we could just go and drag it. Let's say it's a bit more relevant next to the rent. Uh, so then we can go and keep track of each of the deposits um, for the different tenants. Secondly, let's look at adding a file into uh, the database. And we can do this in a couple of ways. So first you'll see here, we've got the reference report with the little clip um, so that means that it's an attachment so if I click into this one we then go and choose a file and here we can see that I've got a dummy referencing report so I just click on that one and then open and then it'll get then go and upload that referencing report to this column so one of the properties within the database or we can go into a record um, instead and go to the body of it and if I just press forward slash and then file uh, here again it'll come up with the same dialog box so choose a file and again we can go and click on the referencing report and open but this time it'll attach it to the main body of the record rather than into the database property. Lastly let me show you how to use board view so that you can track your applicant's progress so here I've got a different view um, here which is called stages and we can see that this is sorted uh, by the various stages so we've got provisional so these are tenants who have just started um, people who are in their fixed term now on their periodic rejected and former tenants um, and here you can move people through your pipeline uh, as their statuses change so you could have as many of these as you want um, so you could have a tenant who's in provisional uh, somebody who's currently in their fixed term and then that ends and then it moves across to periodic um, but it's this Kanban board view is a great way just to go and track the various statuses um, of your uh, various customers um, there is also a different um, um, uh, board view here as well so I've got just per house so if you just wanted to see a quick list of all of your tenants for each of your houses uh, you can sort them by a different field and um, so this is sorted by house rather than by status um, but it's also really easy to see uh, which tenants are in which place Next up is using Notion as a cost tracker. Now Notion isn't a spreadsheet, so it can't do lots of complicated formulas and calculations and those sorts of things. But because it has got database functionality, it makes it really easy to store invoices, to go and filter so that you can see which ones need to be paid. And it can also do some simple sums um, for the various outstanding invoices, etc. So the various Notion features I'm gonna show you in this section are how to use views, just to go and view specific information from your database, how you can go and filter to those views just to pick out the exact records that you need 
and then lastly how to do some simple calculations within the database so firstly let's take a look at how to create a new view within our database so here just near the top we've got a plus symbol so if I click on that one we need to go and give our view a new name so let's just say uh, this is going to be to pay so these are our outstanding invoices um, and here well we can keep it as a table and um, just uh, it gives us a load of information to look at uh, I like to hide the database title and um, that's fine so that disappears uh, and then let's go and click off um, and you can see that we've now got our to pay view here but we have got a bit of a problem and that's that it's listed all of the records when we only want to find those that meet certain criteria so that takes us on to the second notion feature and that's filters so of course we want to go and filter these records so here on the right hand side if I just click on filter we then want to go and select a couple of options and the first one is the status so here we can select various options so it could be is or is not and then it could be empty or not empty so we basically want this to be is and we want it to be received so we've received the invoice however we've not paid it yet or it's not in dispute so I'm just going to tick this one and you can see straight away that it goes and removes some of those records and we're just left with the ones that say uh, received. Now we may want to make this a bit more advanced where we actually go and do it based on date as well. So if I go add filter again, this time we want to go when is it actually due and we want the due date to be within the next week. Um, so if I go is relative to today and then it says this week. So you can see it's selected the dates here. Um, so actually it's got rid of one of the invoices and we're only left with the one that's due within the next seven days. So that's a more uh, advanced filter. So have a play around with them uh, and then I can just go and save that. And we know now we've got our to-do list, which is this invoice here. Lastly, let's look at doing a simple calculation within our database. Now in this view, we've only got one invoice. However, you'll see if I hover near the bottom that it's got these various calculate um, options. So if I go to the amount here, I can click on calculate. And here we could go and count. So how many invoices are due? Uh, we can go and check out uh, the average of those invoices. Um, or we can just do a simple sum. So if I just click here, sum, and you can see we've now got a total down the bottom. So let me just go and add a quick uh, additional invoice. Let's just say that this is going to be a kitchen. Uh, let's say that it's going to be a thousand pounds, very cheap kitchen. Um, it's already put in received, and then we could go and select the other information. But straight away, uh, you can see that that sum has now added that thousand pounds on, so it's now three and a half thousand. So there are lots of different ways that you can do sums uh, for these columns. So just click on them. Um, the options will vary depending on the property type. So we could go and count them here, uh, etc. So just go and have a look at those different count options and how they may be useful in your uh, in your workspace. The next way that you can use Notion in your real estate business is to track important dates using their reminders feature. As a real estate investor, there are loads of things that we need to stay on top of, whether it's arranging gas safety checks for our properties, moving in a tenant on a certain date once they take a room, or remortgaging our property when it comes to the end of its fixed period. But trying to manage all these dates can be quite tricky, but Notion makes this really easy with their reminders feature. You can add reminders throughout your workspace, whether it's into databases or just in pages, then Notion will send you a notification on your desktop so that you know to take action. You'll also get notifications on your mobile too. So I've done a whole separate video on this. So rather than repeat it here, you can just go and check out the video here to find out more. Would you mind giving this video a thumbs up? I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Fourth on our list is a furniture inventory. It can be really useful to track the various items you've got in your different investment properties so that you can record their serial numbers when you purchase them, any attachments, information, etc. And Notion makes this really, really easy. So here you can see my furniture inventory. So we've got the various uh, item names, where their current status, what house that they are currently in, what we paid for them and when we purchased them, uh, if there's a serial number associated with them, any important dates, for example, anything that needs renewing, um, and then lastly, some brief notes. So the three Notion features that I want to show you uh, in this view are how to add unique IDs, uh, how you can add a relationship property to the database, and then lastly, how you can add a button to enable you to add a new item. So firstly, we've got a unique ID property, which you can see here on the left-hand side of the database. Now, this is just a different type of property so if I click onto it and then click edit uh, we can see here on the right hand side uh, just the formatting so this is uh, labeled ID uh, you can add a prefix so because this is the inventory I've put 
INV, uh, and then it goes and adds a uh, unique number after each record. So if I just go and add a new item, so just click new here, let's go and say that this is uh, light. Uh, you can see that straight away it's going and given this a number, which is nine, given the status, and then you could add all the other usual bits in as normal, but that's a unique ID for that item. Next, we've got a relationship. So this is a little bit more advanced for databases, but you can actually go and connect two databases together so that you can reference one in the other. So you can see here that we've got property addresses here. Now these have been added into this database, but let's say that we wanted to have a separate database here of uh, properties. So if I just go and uh, add uh, 123 Church Road, for example, uh, let's go and say that this is uh, status is current. Great. And we want to go and refer to this property within our inventory database rather than using this manual column here. So I'm just going to click on the plus item and the database type is relation. So I click on that one and it'll ask us, well, where do you want to go and uh, relate this property database to? So here, let's just say uh, property here. Great. And then uh, you can limit it. So maybe you only want there to be one record, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Uh, and then do I want this to show on property? Well, yes, that's useful. So I'm going to click this little toggle and then it's got a little bit of a diagram here so that you can make sure you understand it. And then we just go and click uh, add, um, add uh, relation. So now we can see at the bottom that this has added the inventory column to the property database and we've got the property database here on the inventory database. But what this means that you can do is you can go and refer to things that are listed in the property database. So if I click on it, we can now see that we've got 123 Church Road. I'm just going to click on this one. So say that they're related and then you'll see that it's now appeared down here that the double bed is now related to that property. So you can do some really advanced things. You can use roll-ups where it will pull data from one database and display it in another. Um, so this is a bit more advanced, um, but it's a really useful way to go and keep your data in very separate logical areas. So we've got the inventory in one, the properties in the other, but then we can go and connect the two. Finally, a relatively new feature from Notion are their buttons, where you can go and use a button to add items to your database and more. So if I just scroll down, let's just go and show you how to do this quickly. So if I type forward slash button and then return, here we can then just go and select what we want this button to do. So let's say we want to add a new page and we want to add that page to the inventory database. So just go and select that one. And then here we also want to go and say, uh, add some more details. So let's just go and, is it gonna give it a name? No, I think we'll leave that blank you can edit that um, when you actually add the record let's say that the status is going to be new um, so let's just say this is a uh, current uh, and then let's add one more property so let's just say in the notes that this is um, new purchase so that'll add it just to give us a little reminder now if we do that and click the button, we'll give the button a name, so this is add new item. Now if we click that button, we won't actually be able to add any more information to this record because it will just add it. So what the next thing we want to do is then go and open that page. So here we can go open page uh, and we want to go and uh, select the page is the one that we've literally just created. So new page added. So it's going to create the page and then it's going to open the page so we can do more bits to it. So I'll just go uh, open and here, open the new page. Uh, and I'm gonna add one more step in just to show you. And this is uh, show confirmation. So this is, are you sure that you want to continue? Um, so before it adds in a page into the database, we can just double check just in case we accidentally click it. Um, so I'm just gonna put that in as well. And then we've got our two options here. Uh, and then the thing we need to do is we need to put this at the start. So I'm gonna move this up. Great, and then I'm gonna move it up again. So we'll click the button, we'll confirm, then it'll add it to the database. So once we're all happy, let's just press done. And let me show you how this works. So add new item. So we're gonna go and click. It'll double check, are you sure? So it'll create it in the database. It's added in the current status. Uh, and also if we have a quick look in the notes, it's put a new purchase. And then we could go and add in what it is. So let's say that this is going to be a um, cooker, for example. And then we can just go and add in all the relevant information um, and then click off. But it just makes it a little bit smarter um, rather than having to go straight into the database and um, we can have these buttons uh, around our workspace instead For more information on the inventory tracker i have done a separate video on this so just check out the link here for more information Finally, Notion is great for creating a schedule of works for your builder. When I did my first refurbishment, I had no such thing, no clear indication of what I wanted. I just sent an email over to the builder and they just went and sent me a number back for how much it was gonna cost. But I would really recommend you don't do this. Instead, create a schedule of works because it makes it really clear between you and the builder what your requirements are 
how much it's going to cost and they've costed against your schedule of works and lastly it helps you to go and manage any changes or amendments because it's all done in writing and Notion really helps you to go and create this and to go and manage it. So here's the schedule of works generator that I've created and that you can download linked to come very shortly. So here you can see how to add new tasks, so things that need to be done in the property for your builder or potentially for yourself. Uh, we can look at the backlog and things that need to be checked out and then any queries as well. So the three Notion features I want to show you were sync blocks, database templates, and then how to go and sort within a database. So firstly, what are synced blocks? Well, here at the top, if I click and hover over the menu here, we can see that it has a box appear around it. And this is a synced block, where basically anything that happens in this block is then going and replicated wherever that block appears. So here, I'm currently on the home page. But if I just navigate to confirm tasks, we've got the same menu here at the top with different content underneath. And then if I go to to do, again, it's the same menu um, with a different view. And lastly, help. So no matter where the menu is, it's always the same. So let me just go and show you if I was to update this. So if I was to just go and put in here, let's just say, let me move forwards and let's add a little um, different here. Let me put um, a quick guide. Let's say that we were going to go and add uh, a quick guide about how to go and use this view. Here on the home page, if I now click to confirm tasks, quick guide also appears if I go to to do quick guide still appears so because it's in that synced block it's then reflected throughout the um, workspace wherever this block appears so that's a really really easy way to save yourself time if you want to have common menus or common views um, etc um, just go and use a synced block next up are database templates and this is a great way to save time if you're creating items in a database that have a similar sort of structure so let me give you a quick example here just to the right of the next we've got a down button so if I just click on that one I can click new template and let's just say this is going to be a new um, schedule of work item um, the status so that's always going to be the same so let's just say that this is a backlog so whenever we create it it needs a bit of consideration so that'll go into the backlog uh, in terms of contractor at the moment let's just say that that's to be determined so we're not sure uh, and then let's just uh, say keynotes this is um, to be researched, for example. Then in the body, we could go and put a whole host of information in here. So there could be uh, research, uh, there could be uh, questions, info, um, but this is all going into the template. So once this is done, if I just then go and click off, we could click new and that'll be blank, or we can click our little drop down and select a new SOW item. So if I click on that one uh, here, it's then gone and filled in all that information for us, saving us time. One other quick tip is if you want to use the uh, template as the default, click the little drop down to the right hand side, go to the three arrows, the three dots, and then just go and click set as default and uh, we'll do that for all views and what that means is that when you click new it will use the template straight away so you don't even have to click the little down arrow and select it from the list just go and click new and then straight away it's used the template so it's a great way to save time the final notion feature to show you within the schedule of works generator is uh, sorting within the database so if i go here to confirm tasks and here we can see we've got a whole host of different tasks and various bits that need doing uh, on our project. And we just want to go and sort them. So if I click sort here, we then want to go and select what we're sorting by. So let's say that firstly we want to sort by the uh, location. So which room is it in? So if I just click on location, you'll then say that they see that they've rearranged and it's now kitchen, bathroom, lounge, etc. So it's sorted by the location first. But we can layer our sorts so then we could say okay add sort again but this time we're going to do it by a contractor so that will be sorted by the location first then the contractor so if i just click on contractor then a couple of things have moved around again so we can see that within the kitchen we've got client first and then we've got not applicable uh, then we've also got the lounge uh, builder because that's B and then the client. So it's sorted alphabetically and grouped together. So sorts are just a really, really useful way to go and view information in your database in a straightforward and easy to view manner. I go into a lot more detail about the schedule of works generator in a separate video. So if you do want to go and check that out, just click on the link here and I'll also add it into the description below. Earlier in the video, I said I'd share a link with you so that you can download some of these templates for free. Well, if you'd like to add them to your workspace, then just head to the link here and you can go and grab them and do let me know in the comments how you get on i'd love to hear if you did miss the first video on five ways to use notion in your real estate business then go and check it out you can see it here